let's go on to Jamie telling us all about the latest Fortnite chapter four. Over to you, sir. Yeah, it's really good. Like, just I'll, I'll, spoiler alert: it's fucking brilliant. Um, I love Fortnite anyway. Like, I love <laughs> that escalated. That really escalated there. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I, I can't. Help it. I've, I've been having the most fun that I've had with Fortnite for a wee while. Um, I love Battle Royales. I love the whole concept. Like even I love the films. I love Condemned with Steve Austin. Any of it, like I, it's all fun to me because the idea of someone, you know, of, of of trying to be hunted. Everyone always plays them wrong. So this is the thing: everyone plays them wrong. They go for they go for kills. You're not trying to go for kills. You're trying to go for surviving till the end of it. So I like the sneaking around and being stealthy, but then also you end up in a firefight and all of this. It's just, there's so many different things and you have this huge map to explore. So that whole thing, I love it. Fortnite for me is the most fun example of a battle royale. PUBG is potentially a little more realism. Uh, Warzone has its, you know, has its, its charms. Like I like all of them, but Fortnite's the most fun because it's ridiculous. It throws in all this stupidity and I'm there, you know, playing as, I'm, I'm currently playing as a snowman and I'm fighting a guy made of pancakes and it's just fun. Like, it, it's it's awesome. <laughs> now with this season or you know, this chapter, they did the event. The events were always good and they upped it to Unreal Engine 5 and it looks glorious, but they've kept the same aesthetic. Fortnite's got one of those timeless aesthetics. It's always going to look as good as it looks now and it's never going to feel out of date because they're not going for hyper-realism. But they've made it much prettier. There's more grass effects. There's little tufts. There's little things blowing in the wind. The, you know, cherry blossom coming off of trees. All these little bits and pieces that just make the whole world feel a bit more alive. So it's gorgeous to run through and explore. And they've got all these brilliant little spots to explore. They've they've dropped in. Uh, Geralt is in uh, this season. So they have Witcher-themed locations, like medieval type buildings. But we've also doom guys in as part of the battle pass <laughs> so i mean i was sold the minute i saw him on the battle pass oh, that's, <laughs> that's a bit of me um they've changed a ton of the weapons there's loads of new weapons in we've now got uh, these big grav hammer type things but you can use them to spin and bounce across the level so the traversal is great fun the excalibur rifle which lets you shoot swords at people which explode so <laughs> Come so on. It's amazing. I caught someone with one. I'm there sighting, and I caught him with one just as he ducked behind cover. And I could almost hear the guy going, I'm safe. And then he explodes and gets down. And I ran over and beat him to death with a hammer. Thought, yep. There's nothing to not love. But so it's prettier. The battle pass is really solid this season because you've got two, like, Geralt's coming, um, but you've got Doom Guy in there. Plus, you've got some nice original characters as well, which are really nice right. this time around. Um, they've changed the way the battle pass works somewhat, so it's now laid out better, and you can because it you don't have to wait to unlock a page before you can unlock the next page. Some of it's locked by level, so you can save up your stars and get the stuff you want, so you can pick and choose a wee bit more. So that's quite nice. The progression's really good. They've also introduced augments, which are great fun. So you unlock those, and you can like you take a few hits, and you're a little bit low on shield. If you 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 get one called Bushmaster, and if you hide in a bush, you slowly regain shield and health. Or you can see the uh, the next storm circle that's coming, so you can plan your moves, so you can work out right. where you're going to head. Because I like to play on the outside edge of the map and creep my way in and sneak in behind people and stuff like that. <laughs> so I've been playing with friends. I've been playing with my my kids as well. They're both big fans. And it's, yeah, it's just, I think this is one of the most exciting chapters that they've released and one of the most exciting battle passes and seasons. The fractured elements of the map look great. Overall, I'm really impressed. But the best wow. bit of all is the introduction of dirt bikes because those things are ridiculously <laughs> fucking fun. I have been backflipping across that map like a lunatic. <laughs> so, yeah, it's awesome. I'm very, very impressed with what they've done. Damn, damn. Well, I, I, I need to get into Fortnite, and I, and I need a crew to join. I need my amigos to, to I know, I know. That's I didn't realize. Wait, I, I knew, I knew <laughs> Jamie was into Fortnite. I didn't realize Sarah was hardcore into into Fortnite either. I played a match, um, the other day, and I got my very first victory royale. Get it? Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm super excited. But yeah, you're right. 
Like the the upgrade to Unreal Engine Five is stupidly pretty now, and like the colors just seem to like they're extra pop, extra mm-hmm. poppy going on. It's so vibrant and so saturated, but that, that maintaining that classic Fortnite aesthetic. But like the foliage of like, oh my god, look at these trees! Oh shit, I'm dead. Look at look at all of these blades of grass. Oh yeah. shit, I'm dead. That that kind of thing. It's like, can you just leave me alone? I want to just appreciate the world. Stop trying to shoot me. But it, it's, it's it's a lot of fun, and it's um, I I'm terrible at like the shooting and building. I don't know how players manage to multitask. Like I'm getting my ass kicked, but I can build a ginormous fortress whilst under enemy fire. How the fuck did they do that? I feel so like I we're about tend- to say the same thing, Jamie. Yeah, zero Go for build. It. Go for it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Plain zero build. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to do that because uh, the match I, I just did, I was like, I'm not going to bother building anything. I might chop down some stuff just for fun, but I've got all these materials. I don't really know how to do it. And sometimes I was just play focusing with, on surviving. Sometimes you play with people in the in the building one and, and you'll sneeze and turn around and someone's built like a tower. So it's just <laughs> oh, like, yeah. no, 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 no. Oh. Zero build, zero build is the way to go. It's great. Super fun. It's more fun, and, and this is about to really annoy some overly caffeinated 13-year-olds, but I'm sorry, it's more skillful to play without building. Because yep, trying to take you on using existing mm. cover and plan my kills okay. and work okay. with the land is much more, more skillful. But it's not that difficult for you to throw up a compact and bijou maisonette in 13 seconds <laughs> when you've mapped the buttons accordingly. Yep. I have taken one shot before and then have witnessed the birth of Rome, right? And it's just, this is ridiculous, right? <laughs> and they will just build and build and build and build until they have surrounded you in walls and then drop in and shotgun you and then do the L okay. dance on your corpse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. If they're okay. having fun, that's great. But that, to me, just gets frustrating. So I play zero build always now, and it is so much more fun. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm on it. I've got it downloaded. Let's, let's get a session in the books. Let's and do we can, it. We can have Hell some yeah. fun. So, yeah. Always. So, Sarah... Sarah Tell us about your your um, your enjoyment of Fortnite, and have you checked out this season as well? Yeah, so actually, I I'm relatively new to Fortnite. I joined near the end of the previous season because uh, um, a bunch of the folks from Uncanny were like they they play a lot, so we were like, oh, let's 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 play, let's play. And you um near the end of a season, you get supercharged in terms of your XP um, Ooh, because you haven't okay. been able to play throughout the whole season they basically give you i can't i don't know what the multiplier is but you just get like loads of xp which means you can buy a bunch of stuff which is really cool and it's quite satisfying um and then i watched watched a video of the event which looked really interesting i i had no idea there was like story behind Mm. the game i just went oh that's interesting (laughs) okay cool and it, it was something like um it was a streamer. I don't know who the streamer was, but they'd uploaded a video of it, and it's um, the sort of formation of the new world that you go into, which I thought was quite interesting. I, I, it it was a bit kind of like I don't, convoluted, but only because I was like, I don't know what's going on here. This is really elaborate. I thought this was just like a battle royale game where we, we all go in and we kill each other. Like I didn't think there was more to it. Um, but I'm sure that it's it's nice for the fans that have played it right from the start to see how it's evolved throughout the various like seasons of the game um but yeah it's great fun it's it's such a great like casual game you can pick it up play a couple of games like what we started doing was we would plan a game that we were going to play maybe one of us didn't have it installed and in that moment so we'd get that installed get that installing in the background while we played a couple of rounds of Fortnite, and it was it's great it's so easy to play it's it's so endlessly satisfying when you can, you know, oh, my favorite thing is to be as far away as possible and get a little, get a couple of headshots off in the distance. And then someone's sort of like wandering around going, who's shooting me from where? And I'm like, it's me. So you're one of those players. Yeah, the, ca- those. the camper. Yeah. Oh, God. A goose garter, if you will. A goose garter. There we go. <laughs> Need goose uh, garter yeah. t-shirts. Sorry, it's got to happen. <laughs> we do. That's, that has to be our team name or something, right? It has the to be. The Goose Guard is. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where's the clan? With the clan emblem. That's a little goose. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a goose <laughs> with a laurel. and. <laughs> it's, it's such an impressive, the the reach of Fortnite and all of the partnerships and crossovers that they somehow managed to keep on delivering month after month or season after season. I don't know how, mm. how long seasons last for several months, I'm guessing. And mm. every single time they have this ginormous epic finale, 
and they introduce like this whole other thing, this whole other partnership, and they're going, oh my god, like the all of the pop culture stuff that they just drop in. Yeah, it's it's kind of staggering how they managed to get the partnerships. Like India, I remember Indiana Jones was in it. I think the turtles have been in it. I know like Batman and things like that have been in it. Oh, the Marvel been in things it. as well. Yeah, yeah. The, I think there's been Star Wars and things as well. And it's like Jesus oh, yeah. Christ, <laughs> Kid, like I, a lot of the the younger players will be like their their first association with Geralt will be. Oh, it yeah. will be Fortnite, and then they'll look at the Wild Hunt and they'll say, "Hey, there's that guy from Fortnite. He's got his own game." <laughs> It's like no, like, no, no, no. It's the wrong way around. <laughs> it's the wrong way around. <laughs> it happened with there was a TikTok of someone talking about. I've just found out that they made a bunch of films with that guy from Fortnite, and it was fucking Indiana Jones. <laughs> oh and my I've gosh. never in my life been more angry. And I, I, we all know I get angry, but by Christ, I was apoplectic <laughs> with rage. Just, just no, this is not okay. Oh, no. The funny thing is, I gonna happen, I though. kind of ignore a lot of the lore when it comes to Fortnite because I tend to pick up and play and pick up and play. I like mm-hmm. it. I'll, I'll play it every day for weeks and weeks and like for quite you know lengthy sessions sometimes. But I still don't uh, worry too much about the lore. It's all it's, mm-hmm. it's tucked away in there somewhere. But it's so it is very complex. But the law is kind of built around the idea of we need to work out how we're going to break the universe next because we've just managed to sign a deal with Disney and we're getting Thor. So how the fuck do we get Thor? Like, that's what the story's for, really. Mm-hmm. But they put a lot of effort into it. So I'm, I'm not yeah. mad about it at all. And and I don't mind paying for the What I like with it as well is the Battle Pass is not expensive. Uh, it's about six quid to pay for the Battle Pass. But as you unlock the Battle Pass levels you get V-Bucks, which is the in-game currency, throughout the Battle Pass. And if you save them all, you've got enough for your next Battle Pass. So you buy it once and you can just keep getting it and get all these skins mm-hmm. constantly. It's a very cost-effective way. And then you can buy other stuff in, mm. in the thing. They okay. even drop these great yeah. little packs that have a skin and a, a pickaxe and stuff like that, but also have like 600 V-Bucks attached to it. So it's a you get quite a bit for your buck. So it's, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, it's one of my... It's one game that I'm kind of I'm cool with their microtransactions. They've done it right as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing game breaking. It's all cosmetic. It's all fun. I'm down for it. So, but yeah, okay. this chapter particularly yeah. nailed it. Well done, Epic. You've, uh, <laughs> yeah. you've reined it in. It's great I, fun. I, well, I have to admit, if, if there was one character that would make me a hardcore fan into Fortnite, it would be the introduction of Garfield, and he has a lasagna <laughs> cannon. He just throws las- <laughs> lasagnas at people. That would be, that's all, give me that, and I'll be quite happy. At this point, I would rule out nothing when it comes to Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Is Guybrush yeah. in it? Guybrush, Threepwood, and then Lachuk, are they in it? They've made the crossover yet? Mm, I don't no. think so. Jeez, that would be so cool, doing. though. I want to play as Lachuk. That'd be awesome. Yeah. There was a pirate say, of the Caribbean one, right? Like Johnny Depp's character. Yeah. yeah. Sparrow yes. was in it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, there's, I mean, there's a Rick and Morty one, which is around in the shop oh, yeah. currently, yeah. and that's awesome. You can play as Rick, and you, you know, but you can also Morty, but he's in like a little mech suit because he's too short. So <laughs> it's just it's okay. little things. They're very clever with it. Um, but there is one, there is one character that just a, a call to arms, if you will, to anyone playing Fortnite. If you see anyone playing as Peely, you focus the Peely first. That banana has to die. Yep, every time. Hate that yellow bastard. <laughs> Damn, I'm not okay, okay with him. Wow. That's uh, is that is that bananas in general, or just this particular one? Just Peely, he's creepy as he's this six foot tall banana with these dead black eyes, like Michael Myers. I'm not okay with him. <laughs> Gives me the skeeve. I'm not. Nope, don't like him. <laughs> See, speaking speaking of bananas, why have we never had a banana man game, Jamie? Oh, <gasps> Eric, you imagine. The the child who turns trans. Have you are, are you aware, Sarah? Have you are, do you know I about the know cartoon eighties cartoon from our childhood, uh, Banana Man? Um, oh, Jamie, you take you explain this one. Go for it. So Banana Man is uh is Shazam, but instead okay. of saying Shazam, he eats a banana <laughs> and turns into this really <laughs> stupid <laughs> adult man. Because Banana Man was not intelligent. Like he no. was very strong, but. Dumb as a box of brushes. Like he just had no clue what was going on around him. Um, so yeah, I think Superman with a concussion and right. 
a blue and yellow suit because obviously blue, which the suit was primarily blue as well. He's fucking banana man. When's the last time you saw a blue banana? All in all, this was a stupid well, show. Well, to be fair, <laughs> his 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 gauntlets and boots and and mask and cape were yellow. That was the yellow, but his okay. his his body suit was blue. I don't know where, why or where that came from. I know. I, anyway, I feel like blue yeah. was not the, but you know, whatever. But it was, yeah, it was a cracking eighties. It was a lot of fun. It was Eric who lived, uh, and I can't remember the address, and that will now annoy me all day. So that's great. <laughs> I don't know because all I can think of is sixty four Zoo Lane, and that's an entirely different kids show. I think but, so. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So but, yeah. Step Banana Man in the game animated. Animated. Oh, it was animated. animated oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. well, the only banana show that I watched as a kid was Bananas in Pajamas. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't trigger Jamie, Sarah. Don't trigger sorry, Jamie. I'm sorry. Apparently, yeah. I don't like anthropomorphic bananas. <laughs> don't, don't well, I don't think anybody be... does. Tell I mean, me. I, I don't know why someone thought that it was a good idea to yeah say you know what's really good bananas and humans. Let's yeah. merge them. No, no, no. We eat bananas. That's what we do. We eat them. Yeah. When I. Would so, very short segue when I would, and this is one of the weirdest tangents I've ever given on this show. When when I would come up here to Scotland to stay on holiday, because obviously I grew up in the south of the UK and moved here. But when I would come up, there was a uh, a cat. It was the ga- the Gaelic equivalent of S four C. There was like you know uh, Scots Gaelic programming in the morning sometimes, and there was a show called. And I've never been able to find it since, but it was called Raned Bananet. And it was Granny Banana. And it was these human kids who would go to stay with their granny, but she was a fucking banana. And she would tell them what? stories. On I shit you not. Right? This is this is not well, an actual showrunners trip. smoking back Why? then. Jesus. Go, mate, I was like I remember being like, I don't know, maybe eleven, twelve, and like up early. It's like, what's on the TV? And then there's this big banana with grey hair and a wee house dress sat there going, Oh, but well, I don't speak Gaelic, and I'm not going to try and butcher it for you. As but, but yeah, it's a cranet bananet, and then these kids would come and sit on her feet, and then there was like, I'm sure, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm sure she made like banana splits for them one day, and I'm like, that's weird, that's so <laughs> that's weird. Cannibalism for the granny, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> so yeah, Jeez. that's what oh, we had to weird bananas. Shit. Yeah, not okay. Wow. Taking wow. a start. Maybe on next week's show, listeners and viewers, we might talk about Super Ted and other 80s cartoons from our childhood oh. and, how, and how it shaped Jamie into the, into the entity he is today. But anyway, we will not go further down this rabbit hole and get no. way off course, but it's fine. 